In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate muscle energy for the ribs, specifically for exhalation dysfunctions. As with any rib dysfunctions, we're going to be focusing our treatment on the key rib of each group dysfunction. And for these examples, we're going to be utilizing muscle activation, rib mobilization principles, in which we're going to be positioning our patient's arm into several characteristic positions to maximize muscle engagement so we can mobilize the ribs through the restricted barrier. I'm going to be touching a few different areas uh, along your shoulders, your back, uh, your lower back, and your pelvis, and your arms. Uh, you let me know if anything is uncomfortable, if anything hurts you, or if you need me to stop or change positions, and I can do that. Okay. okay. Our first example is key rib one or two, and for our specific instance, we're going to be focusing on rib one, exhalation dysfunction. We're going to start with our patient in a supine position. Let's go ahead and lie back and we can sit or stand next to our patient. We want to make sure that our table's at a good height and that we're comfortable throughout our technique. So for rib one, exhalation dysfunction, its position of ease would be in an exhalation position, which is relatively inferior and also primarily pump handle motion. And to treat it with muscle energy, we're going to want to emphasize its restricted barrier, which is inhalation, which is more superior, emphasizing more pump handle motion. So we're gonna start by finding our landmarks and positioning our patient. For ribs one and two, we're gonna position our patient with their hand on their head. We're also gonna have them look a little bit to the left. We're gonna take one hand and find our landmarks. Reaching underneath, we can find C7, T1, then move lateral. We're gonna find the superior aspect of the angle of rib one, and we're gonna be tractioning inferiorly and lateral. We're gonna take our other hand and we're gonna make contact on our patient's hand directly over their head. So now the purpose of our patient's hand here and our contact on their hand is not so that they can lift their hand against us. Instead, it's just so that we're not pushing directly on their head. So now we're gonna have our patient lift their head up to the ceiling. So as they lift their head up to the ceiling, they're gonna be engaging the scalenes, specifically for rib one, the anterior and medial scalenes. If we were contacting rib two, it would be posterior scalenes. So go ahead and push up to the ceiling using your head. We're gonna be providing isometric resistance with our hand at the same time that we're providing constant resistance inferiorly on the posterior aspect of the rib angle. And then we're gonna have our patient relax. And then we're gonna take one to two seconds and pause. And then we can advance to the next restricted barrier by pulling the posterior aspect of the rib more inferiorly and laterally to the next restricted barrier. And then we can have our patient lift their head up again while we provide some isometric resistance. And then after three to five seconds, we can have them relax. And then we can move to the next restricted barrier. Then we'll have our patient lift their head again. Go ahead and push up. And after three to five seconds, we can have them relax. And then we can move to the next restricted barrier. So each time I'm not applying more pressure with my hand, only advancing to the next restricted barrier with this posterior hand. And then go ahead and lift your head up. We provide isometric resistance. After three to five seconds, then we have them relax and then we move to the next restricted barrier. So after five to seven times, we would return our patient back to a neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. Our next example is for key ribs three, four, or five, and our specific instance is going to be for rib five, exhalation dysfunction. For ribs three through five, we're gonna be utilizing the pectoralis minor muscle with its attachments from the coracoid process to the anterior aspect of ribs three, four, and five, which is gonna allow us to emphasize the pump handle motion for ribs three through five. We're gonna be positioning our patient's arm on their forehead. Their head does not have to be turned to the side. So we could take our hand that's closest to the patient and slide underneath, finding our restricted rib. And then we're gonna hook our fingers on the superior aspect of the rib angle of the restricted rib, which in this case is rib five. We're gonna be applying an inferior and lateral traction, sustaining that pressure throughout the technique. And then we're gonna take our other hand and contact the elbow. And then we're going to press the elbow gently towards the floor. As we engage the elbow towards the floor, we're gonna appreciate the tension applied to ribs three through five, and specifically the restricted rib, rib five. So now we're gonna have our patient lift their elbow up to the ceiling while we're gonna provide isometric resistance and that's gonna engage the anterior aspect of rib five. So go ahead and push up to the ceiling and we're gonna maintain 
our inferior and lateral drag on the posterior aspect of rib five while we're maintaining the isometric resistance on the elbow. And then relax. And then we can advance to the next restricted barrier, dragging the posterior aspect of the rib inferior and lateral. And if there's a little bit more give, we can advance the elbow down to the table. Go ahead and push up to the ceiling again. We can provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds. The pectoralis minor is lifting the rib through the restricted barrier and then relax. And then we can pause and move to the next restricted barrier, engaging more of an inferior and lateral drag on the posterior aspect. We're gonna repeat this for a total of five to seven times and then we can return our patient back to a neutral position and reassess for somatic dysfunction. Our next example is gonna be for a key rib six, seven, or eight. And for our specific instance, we're gonna be focusing on rib six, exhalation dysfunction. For rib six, exhalation dysfunction, again, it's freedom of motion is mostly inferior, but now primarily bucket handle motion. And in order to engage that, we're gonna be utilizing the serratus anterior muscle with its attachments from the anterior medial border of the scapula out to the lateral aspect of ribs two through eight. So in order to set up our patient, we're gonna have our patient's elbow at a right angle, and we're gonna allow the hand to rest across their chest. We're gonna again find our landmarks and find the superior aspect of the rib angle of the rib that we're trying to treat. So for rib six, finding the superior angle of the rib. And then I'm gonna take my other hand and place it right on the elbow. And then maintaining that 90 degree angle, I'm gonna push the elbow and the arm down to the table that's going to retract the scapula and apply a little bit of stretch on the serratus anterior muscle. At the same time, I'm applying an inferior and lateral drag on the superior aspect of that rib angle. So now I'm gonna have my patient lift their elbow up to the ceiling, which is gonna engage serratus anterior and lift the rib into an inhalation position. So go ahead and push your elbow up to the ceiling. We're gonna provide isometric resistance while maintaining our inferior and lateral drag on the posterior aspect of the rib. And then after three to five seconds, we can have our patient relax. As they relax, we relax. We take a moment and position to the next restricted barrier with a little bit of more inferior and lateral drag. And if there is some relaxation, we can also advance the arm towards the table. Go ahead and push your elbow up to the ceiling. And we provide asymmetric resistance for three to five seconds. And then relax. And then we move to the next restricted barrier. Push up again. And then after three to five seconds, we relax. And then we repeat the cycle for five to seven times. And then we return our patient back to a neutral position and we reassess for somatic dysfunction. Our next example is for key ribs nine and 10. In this case, we're gonna be utilizing the latissimus dorsi muscle, which attaches to the posterior lateral aspects of ribs nine and 10. To set up for this, we're gonna sit next to our patient and abduct their shoulder. We're gonna make contact with the rib that's dysfunctional. And in this case, that's rib 10, exhalation dysfunction. We're going to hook on the superior aspect of the rib angle. And then we're going to drag inferior and lateral. At the same time, we're gonna be abducting the shoulder until we feel tension created right at that rib angle. Now we're gonna have our patient pull their arm towards the hip, which is gonna contract latissimus dorsi and lift rib 10 through the restricted barrier into an inhalation position. And in terms of providing asymmetric resistance, we can either stabilize by tucking our elbow into our own rib cage and provide asymmetric resistance, or we can slide next to our patient and use our torso to provide isometric resistance. Okay, so inferior lateral and a little more abduction until I feel tension, and then go ahead and uh, pull your arm down towards your hip. We're gonna provide isometric resistance, maintaining our inferior and lateral drag, and then relax. They're gonna relax, we're gonna relax, and then we can advance to the next restricted barrier with a little more inferior and lateral drag on the superior aspect of the rib angle. And we can also advance with more shoulder abduction until we feel tension at rib 10. And then go ahead and push down towards your hip. And after three to five seconds, we can relax. Go ahead and relax. And we can advance to the next restricted barrier. And then push again. And relax. 
and we can advance to the next restricted barrier. So we would repeat that a total of five to seven times, and then we return our patient back to a neutral position and reassess for somatic dysfunction. Our next example is key rib 11 and 12, and to treat those, we're gonna position our patient in a prone position. Can you flip over onto your belly? For our specific example, we're gonna be treating rib 12, exhalation dysfunction, and for ribs 11 and 12, we're gonna recall that the exhalation position, freedom of motion, is anterior and superior, and for muscle energy, we're gonna to wanna to position it to its restricted barrier, which is an inhalation position, inferior and posterior. So, how are we gonna accomplish that? We're gonna be utilizing the quadratus lumborum muscle, which attaches from the iliac crest to rib 12. And in order to maximize tension on the quadratus lumborum, we're gonna position our patient with side bending away from the dysfunctional rib. We can do that by bringing our patient's feet towards us. So now we're gonna find our landmarks. Because we're gonna be contacting our patient's pelvis, we wanna make sure that they're aware before we make contact. I'm gonna be putting my hand in your pelvis, both on the top here and also in the front. Uh, let me know if you're uncomfortable at any point, okay? Great. So now we can find our landmarks, finding iliac crest, then finding the inferior margin of the ribs, then finding the tip of rib 11, and then following rib 11 back. So now with the hypothenar eminence of our cephalad hand, we're going to contact the inferior aspect of rib 11. That's going to support rib 11 and allow rib 12 to float freely so that when we contract quadratus lumborum, quadratus lumborum can pull rib 12 into an inhalation position. We're gonna take our other hand and we're gonna contact the ASIS and we're gonna be pulling the pelvis inferior and posterior, which is going to again engage rib 12 into its restricted barrier, which is inferior and posterior. So now we're gonna have our patient contract their quadratus lumborum by lifting their hip up towards their shoulder on the same side. So I'd like you to lift your left hip up to your shoulder. So as they do that, we're gonna provide asymmetric resistance. And then after three to five seconds, we can have them relax. As they relax, we relax. And then we can advance to the next restricted barrier with a little bit more posterior drag on the ASIS and a little bit more superior glide on rib 11. And go ahead and lift your hip to your shoulder. We provide isometric resistance. And then after three to five seconds, we can have our patient relax. And then we'll relax and then we'll position our patient to the next restricted barrier. Now, this position might be difficult for our patient to engage their specific muscles in the way that we're hoping. So as an alternate approach, we can utilize respiratory assist principles to mobilize the rib in the same way. So again, utilizing re respiratory assist principles, we're still going to side bend the patient away from the dysfunctional side. We're also going to contact the ASIS, but with our cephalad hand, we're gonna be using our thenar eminence and index finger to find the superior aspect of rib 12 and we're gonna be pushing rib 12 inferior and then pulling on ASIS to pull it posterior. So now we're gonna have our patient inhale and exhale, and when they breathe in, we're going to accentuate the inferior and posterior glide of rib 12, and during exhalation, we're gonna be resisting rib 12 as it tries to move back into exhalation. So go ahead and take a breath in, and we're gonna emphasize that inferior glide, and then when they breathe out, we're gonna resist, we're gonna breathe in, we're gonna emphasize that inferior and posterior glide, and then when they breathe out, we're gonna resist, and then breathe in again, we're gonna emphasize inhalation, and they breathe out, we're gonna resist exhalation, and we would repeat this for a total of five to seven times, and then we return our patient back to a neutral position and reassess for somatic dysfunction.